and still the undefeated champion of the world, Cheese Pa. What was that? You didn't want to do that. Wait, what's this? T turn my head. Why? Oh! Shoot. He does have a nasty slap. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm on. I'm live. I'm live. Let me back up. Hopefully, you don't. Oh, there she is. There we go. I have my friend no shirt on. I think everything else is in the wash. Oh, shoot. What shirt am I going to wear? Thursday! Thursday, I'm going to go to NXT. And today, my cat, the reason why she's featured is because she beat up the neighbor's dog today. The neighbor's dog somehow got in my yard. My cat was having none of it. And that dog went yipping away. Poor stupid dog. Not here to talk about that, though. Again, on this show, well, maybe a mosquito or two might, might be killed. But no cats or, well, at least sometimes people might be hurt. But definitely no cats are hurt. There is no animal cruelty on this show other than what my cat does to me. It's okay. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And then I'll get into a little bit of the schedule for the week because this is a good week. Well, somewhat. Well, it's it's... Not getting better. Wait a second. I was going to say this week's getting better, but it's not going to get better until Thursday for sure. Actually, tomorrow should be good. Tomorrow I get to go up to Jacksonville. The very quick programming note um, probably going to make tomorrow's show a little bit later. It's going to be up sometime Wednesday morning. Then Thursday, I'm off to NXT Sanford. Woohoo! So that means on Friday, there's going to be more NXT content on the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. So, But let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. It was, it was an okay show. Again, they do that kind of sandwich thing where they have a lot of matches. A lot of matches. And very nebulous. So let's start off. We have Brock Lesnar. And Paul, of course, Paul Heyman has his intro. It was pretty good. Um, he gets booed. I don't. I don't think they were in Chicago. Normally, when the WWE goes to Chicago, they start raining out CM Punk chants. I wonder if they did that, and they just and WWE through the magic of editing edited it out. Or, oh, I forget his, but a CM Punk and his two UFC losses, which were really bad, I think I could last a little longer. I honestly think I can. But I wonder if just the fact that he's lost the, the, in those two UFC fights he's been in, the first one was terrible. The second one was a little bit less terrible. If all the hype behind CM Punk kind of died down. Or the other thing. Now it's, it's, it's that old phrase, time heals, it, time heals everything. So I wonder if it's just gone its natural course of chance. You never know. Because you don't hear the 10 chant anymore. Well, that's right, you don't. What's, what's going to be around forever? Because that's easy. CM Punk, I haven't heard that in a while, though. Chicago's the one city where they're allowed to do it. Maybe Philadelphia. We'll, we'll see what happens. And I'll, and I'll get to this a little bit later. Um, a couple other things. Think throughout the show. Oh, there was a right ringside. There was a huge China poster. 
One day China will get in by herself, probably not for a while. But let's talk about some wrestling matches. First match to start off the evening, we have Finn Balor versus a mystery and mystery partner. Takes on Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush. Again, kind of starts off with a Finn recap about how he lost the belt. Leo Rush is getting really good on the mic. I do like the fact that the WWE is letting the wrestlers talk more. It's a lot more natural sounding than, than, than saying, okay, see the script? This is your line. This is your line. Memorize here. Memorize script. Oh, here, I have to give this. You didn't memorize it. Better get it from him. I think now they're just doing like bullet points and saying and trying to be a little bit more natural, which is pretty good. Yeah, my cat doesn't like being on YouTube, <laughs> but I know people that I've done YouTube videos to, they, they love seeing my cat on YouTube, especially when she slaps me. But Leo Rush is so good on the mic. Uh, Finn and Braun have teamed before, and it was good in the fact that they didn't have their regular antics of Braun just using Finn as a weapon. It was more like a wrestling match. It was actually a pretty good one. I'll tell you what, though. Leo Rush in that ring is small looking. I mean, he's tiny. He's like a, a kid among grown men. He's tiny looking. Very quick. Um, Lashley is, but, but to, to, get to, Ella, to get to the match, Lash, Bobby Lashley's strong. Braun Strowman is a little bit stronger than him. So again, you have the test of strengths, shoulder tackles, everything. Eventually, Finn does get in the ring. Um, there, again, Bobby Lashley's strength is more pronounced. Again, Finn's a smaller man. You, you would expect that. Again, Finn... In this match, I mean, when Leo Rush is in the ring with Finn, Le Finn just seems slower. I think Leo Rush is incredibly fast, though. And even with um, Braun, didn't seem that slow, but he, was, he wasn't in the match a lot, though. He had, his, he had, again, his Braun spots of where he destroys barricades. Still fun. Um, Bobby Lashley went, like, literally top of head first into ring post, though. That can't be good. Uh, Leo Rush, when he got tossed into the Bronze Drama's corner, he had the look of absolute fear and terror right all over his face. Very good. And when Braun did get in against Leo Rush, whew, there is a size difference there, folks. I mean, he was just getting tossed around by Braun. Braun would literally pick him off the ground. And just toss him somewhere. I mean, eventually, Braun Strowman hit, the, hit that running power slam on Leo Rush. And picked up the pin. It was a fun match. This is a good, really good opening cheeseburger match. Then uh, we have a moment of bliss. And Elias comes out. Hi, hello, my name is Alas. Hello, my name is Alexa. That sounded like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> the thing that made this whole segment work is that heavy machinery went the Congo line to interrupt the moan of bliss. Otis Dozovich is nothing but pure charisma and pure character. I think it's it's very um, Randy Poffo esque, where you have Otis Dozovich, the man's probably here. Otis Dozovich, the wrestler, he just cranks it up a little bit, <laughs> but he's oozing charisma and character. He loves it. Um, Tucker Knights needs to get some of that charisma. Only bad thing I have to say about them. Tucker Knight's very straightforward, deadpan. Otis Dozovich is, yeah! All I need to say about that. Hidden in the conga line, however, was a disguised No Way Jose. Whoa, 
trickeration. And this led to the next match of No Way Jose versus Elias. It was good. Um, no Way Jose starts off with the early advantage, and you have all the Congo line people going, No way, Jose. No way, Jose. It was pretty cool like that. Um, with the exception of when No Way Jose missed that big splash. Then it was all Elias. Again, it was pretty good, though. It, uh, no Way Jose did come out in a different look. I think I preferred him and his kind of gi bottoms and puffy afro hair. Now he has that kind of green dreadlock hair and green pants. Um, oh, what's that thing? Um, not samba. It's a Brazilian fighting style of pants. I forget it now. It's not Lucia Libre. Capi. Capi something. Forget. Again, you can always go online and correct me if I, if in case I just zone out for a little bit. That was a fun match. Again, another good cheeseburger match. Then we have Kurt Angle come out. And again, it was pretty good. Um, I think the only thing I really took away from this WrestleMania is going to be a slog. I think they have 17 matches on for WrestleMania. That's going to be a long freaking watch. Even if I do get to see it all. That has to be nine hours. I think it's supposed to be 400 plus minutes. See, do I have my calculator here? No, but I want to say it was 600 minutes, so it would be 10 hours. Still probably going to be about eight hours. And then there's a pre show. Wow, that's going to be a long watch. Ooh. So, but Kurt Angle comes out, and he's he's talking about who he wants to face at WrestleMania for his final retirement match. And he's going to face Baron Corbin. That'll be a good match, probably. It's not going to be the best, but instead, right now, Kurt Angle versus Chad Gable, and more importantly, it's face Chad Gable, who comes out all decked in his American Alpha gear, and he actually looked really good. And this match was amazing. I was so happy because I, I swear for about one or two minutes they had a shoot amateur wrestling match. Which if it wasn't a shoot darn it was good. And again, a shoot wrestling match, they actually, they probably said, hey, you know what? You're a legend. Can you really make my, my day? Give me like one minute amateur collegiate style wrestling. And if you do that, I'll do, I will sell you like you're a million bucks. And I'm sure Kurt Angle, once he heard surfers for two minutes, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, one minute? No. <laughs> Actually, he probably... Chad Gable probably said, can we have a shoot one-minute match? And Kurt Angle probably said, no, you can have a shoot two-minute match. So again, it was really good, though. I mean, this was an amazing wrestling match. Very technical. Again, so fun when they go technical. I mean, it was just a fun, feel-good match. Because it was a fun, feel-good match that had some shoot 
collegiate wrestling elements in there. This match, hey, Kurt Angle won. He's getting the great farewell tour power to him. God knows he's provided us with so much entertainment. Kurt Angle won, but again, this was a surf and turf match. So again, we have all the wrestling. Only one promo so far. And then it becomes a slog. Well, actually, it was pretty good. But again, when they do the promos, oh, I don't know why it was a slog. Because they broke up everything. So then they had Baron Corbin. He had a heel, he had a heel promo. Um, now they chanted... And he came out to, uh, on the stage, and, and they started... Uh, Chicago people are very appreciative of good wrestlers. They started to chant, he's our hero. Poor Kurt Angle, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Baron Corbin cuts a heel promo. Kind of give a Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns recap. Then uh, it's a Boston Hug promo, and Italian Beth Phoenix and Beth Phoenix come out. Naya eventually comes out, confronts Beth Phoenix. Tamina's, like, hiding somewhere. And, like, jumps Phoenix, and it's just a beatdown. And then you have a Mojo in the Mirror segment. Um, then you have Ricochet versus Jinder Mahal. It was a really, f it was a fun match. It was again a strength versus speed match. So once you have contrasting styles, I'll enjoy it. I mean, nothing's wrong with that. I mean, you have some flippy stuff. Again, he's really good. Surprisingly, this was a relatively short match. I think they're realizing that all the flippy stuff that Ricochet does comes with a certain cost with it. And they do want to keep him around for a long time. Which just makes sense. So again, they're going to say, you know what? We'll, let, we'll, give, we'll give you a guy who's, who's based really on, who's more stronger. He's, um, not so much strike-wise, but known, but known for his kind of brute, I'm going to lean on you, and, and where you don't slowly wrestled techniques. Like Jinder Mahal. And Jinder Mahal is really good, though. The Sings got involved. But I'll tell you what, they got involved just right, really, to either catch Ricochet when he did his flippy thing out of the ring, or, of course, to pull Jinder out of harm's way. I mean, they weren't the focus of it, unlike past times where, where they were like, oh, well, what's the Sing Brother? What's going to happen in the next Sing Brother? So, again, this was different that way. So, hey, it's different. It's good. Uh, again, Ricochet was <laughs> being selling and a half for Gender though. He made Gender look so strong. Again, it was really good pace. Um, Ricochet has that standing, that running moonsault. Amazing! I can never do that. I'd probably, probably throw my back. I'd probably land on my. I think I have to go this way. I'd probably land on my head. I'd probably land on my back hurt myself that way. And then the 630s, amazing. Uh, Richie picked up a win. Again, it was a fun cheeseburger match. Then the next match, um, well, there was a Dana Warrior, uh, Dana Warrior promo. I think Suzanne, someone from WWE has been in the company like forever. Is going to get the Warrior Award. Our next match it was Ronda Rousey versus Dana Brooke. Kind of was what I expected it. They had a little bit of a, a build up to it. Ronda Rousey enters in the building earlier. It's worn by refs. Hey, you've already had been fine. We have security here just to keep an eye on you and to keep the refs safe. Yeah, so we'll see how that. Once they say we're, we we have people to keep the refs safe, you know what's happening. Um, Dana Brooke. Gives gives the yeah I'm so happy for my moment in the sun. Yeah, it was a three minute squash match. Dana Brooke tried one kick. That was all. That was all she wrote. Um, Ronda Rousey just beat her up. Did the standing armbar. Um, looked like she almost broke Dana's arm. I'm trying to think. I think she did it. Oh, that's right. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that was a three minute squash match. It was a ham sandwich. I mean, Ronda Rousey obviously won. 
Um, she would not let go, though, of the armbar. Referees had to come out. Security eventually came out. Um, the guy to the, uh, she went to the outside of the ring, slapped the referee, um, decked out some security guy. The husband got involved. <laughs> We're going to talk about him in one moment. But I, I guess uh, some other security guy kind of like peeled Ronda Rousey off the referee. She was just menacingly standing over him. So the security guy put his hands on Ronda. Of course, you put your hands on another man's wife. Got knocked out with an elbow. He delivered a pretty good forearm, though. I'll, I'll give him that. Uh, uh, the security guy sold really well for him. He picked up Ronda Rose. He picked her up over the barricade. <laughs> and then... And I have to get a, I have to, I should make this a thing. But in the spot of the night. <laughs> you can tell the two of them truly love each other. Yes, you can tell. I don't I forget what his name is. I think it's a Travis Black. Travis or Travis Black. <laughs> He just gave her a tap on the derriere. Good job, sweetie. <laughs> that just seems such a natural thing. Yep, you did good, sweetie. It's tapped. His wife Lauren Rousey on the bus. That's the spot of the night. So that was that was good. Um, then they had another self promo somewhere. <laughs> I still can't get over the fact that they're walking away. <laughs> he just grabbed her, I, and I know it's his wife. I know it's his wife. He just <laughs> right in front of everyone. <laughs> The Hunter Houses are so funny at, when they have to get involved with pro wrestling. <laughs> Having way too many laughs about this. Oh, let's get back to the wrestling. Um, eventually in the back, uh, Baron Corbin's talking to the Revival. <laughs> I can't believe it. He just... Her butt. Like that. Oh, but, um, but, nothing but the but. Uh, Corbin's in back talking to the revival. Apollo Crews confronts him. He wants to match. It was a, it was an okay match. Um, fun, it was a fun match. It's really hard to complain about it. Um, again, it's a different, it's a little bit different match. Uh, Baron Corbin's a little too strong. Apollo Crews is so athletic, though. They really have to work Apollo Crews in more. Just the fact that he can do so much. Um, he kicked out of the deep six, which is good because that's kind of like the job finisher. It's also the signature move. And then he was going to go, go for, I think, the end of days. But Baron Corbin fell victim to his one weakness. His one weakness is the roll-up. He got rolled up. It was a pretty good match. Um, again, a good solid cheeseburger match. And then we get to the main event of the evening. Uh, 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 then there was the whole Batista thing. And Michael Cole's true. He has been putting on weight. He's a little bit puffier in the face. Listen, I'm no skinny guy. But I can tell when you're putting on weight. And you can tell because his suit jacket seemed a little tight at the button. And I've gone through that. And I've had to lose weight. And I've said, I, I've run this. No more Cheez-Its for me. So no more Cheez-Its for you either, Michael Cole. Good job, honey. Oh, that was funny. That was just, 
so organic and not scripted. Uh, then we have Seth versus Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre in the main event. It was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was a breakout at the beginning. They just jump each other. When I think Drew's coming down the ramp, Seth is in the ring. Seth just runs out, beats him up on the ramp. It was good. For the most part, it was a huge brawl. And Drew is so strong. Eventually, it becomes if a brawl that becomes a wrestling match. It was fun, though. Um, Drew's so strong. Drew's that half step ahead Seth Rollins for most of the match. Really shows. I mean, Seth is obviously the more agile. He's still strong, but he's a little bit more agile. But Seth's problem is that he's very easily distracted. I mean, towards the end of the match, Brock Lesnar's music hits. Brock just stands up there, does his little, 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 boxing, little boxing shuffle, gives Paul Heyman the belt, just stands up there. Seth goes like, Whoa! What do you want? And then he just, he just turns around and gets claymored by Drew McIntyre, and that was the end of the match. Seth, focus. You need to focus. But, I mean, overall, it was a good match. Um, Drew McIntyre obviously won. It was a good cheeseburger match. And that was Raw in a nutshell. Um, I do want to say, uh, Renee seemed to be speaking less. And I think it made the show better. I know there was, uh, she did an interview. Oh, wow, I forget the source. It's, it's on YouTube somewhere. But she says that she's been working on commentary. And people have been getting her, giving her pointers. Hey, the fact that says they're, they're giving her constructive criticism is a good thing because if they didn't, they'd be like, okay, do whatever. But if they're giving her constructive criticism and saying, hey, you need to talk a little bit less, sometimes, you know, that makes sense. And and because I know, like, in past Raws, she seems just to ramble on. Um... It might be just a fine nitpicky point, but if she's rambling on during wrestling matches, like okay, there, there's a wrestling match going on, and what? And you're like, well, what did Renee just say? And she kind of took away a little bit from it. I know she's new at this, and hey, as, as long as they're, as, if she's being honest and saying, hey, we re review the tapes with everyone, it's like they're giving me constructive criticism, they're giving me pointers. They're not just saying, oh, you, you're bad at this. They'll probably say, if you're giving your point, it's, oh, that was really good, too. They'll say, oh, you have to work on this. Hey, it's constructive, though. It's very hard It's very hard to, to poo-poo that. So, again, it actually, it, it seemed to be working. Um, it seemed more natural, I think. It made, it made the wrestling matches seem more natural. It made them seem... More like an athletic endeavor. It's a good thing. And that was Monday Night Raw. A pretty good show. It's hard to complain. It wasn't spectacular. It was good. It wasn't bad. Could have been much worse. Um, a little bit about my schedule. Again, Tuesday, going to be getting these videos a little bit late. So it's either going to be up Wednesday morning or Wednesday night, depending when I watch SmackDown. So we'll see about that. And then Thursday, I'm off to NXT. So you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, at NXT in Sanford on Thursday. And then probably Friday. I'll put up my video I make about that, because I always do those. Then next week, I have to see what my schedule is. But I know it's going to be, again, Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown. And I know NXT is coming back here today to Daytona Beach. So I really would like to get a video for that. So we'll see what happens. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and have a good night. Have a good night. Bye.